Okay, this is Jim Anderson. I'm a uh, working artist with the Menhow Arts Alliance. And this is part two of my lesson called Wiggly Worms and Itsy Bitsy Critters about the amazing life under the ground. Okay, so we got our plant, and we'll probably add more details to it, but for now that's, that's done. So we've got the garlic plant, it has its stem, it has leaves, most plants have these things. This has a bulb, and that's where it stores a lot of the food, and that's the part that we eat. Hello, we eat other parts of it too. And then the roots are going out into the soil, into the rich topsoil, and they're bringing nutrients and water up to the plant. Now, there's so much going on in the soil that it will just blow your mind. In fact, I've kind of known about soil for a few years. I've been making compost and gardening and stuff, but I've just started to study what really goes on down there, and it's like a whole other world. I'm gonna start with one of the biggest creatures that's important to the soil. And it is a, it's a worm. And I'm gonna start out by doing it, making an entrance to its burrow. So see, this is the ground level, and I'm gonna make this little deal here. And these worms that we're gonna draw right now are the biggest worms that you'll ever see around here. They're very common. You probably know them as night crawlers. They're also called dew worms because they like to come out when the ground is wet. Like all worms, these guys do not like the light, so they do most of their uh, traveling above ground at night. That's why they're called night crawlers. Now, I drew the burrow first, and I'm just gonna draw the worm inside the burrow. So this picture, it's not really day or night, but it's just mainly to teach you about worms, so it really doesn't matter if it's dark out, because this worm's gonna get something to eat. So he's coming out of his burrow, like so. And then got to come a blunt end there. This is where his mouth is. And then they get wider. That's called tapering when something gets wider. And so they get wider. Well, I say he, but you know, it's not a he. And you're saying, well, how can you tell if it's a he or a she? Ah, one of the crazy things about worms, that every worm is both a he and a she. They're all he's and she's. They all have all the male parts and they have all the female parts, each one, but they still need another worm to get together with to fertilize their eggs. So they're called what's called hermaphrodites. Now, all worms, males and females, or they're all males and females, what am I saying? They have this organ called a clitellum, and it's about, oh, maybe a quarter of the way down the body. So right here, I'm gonna make kind of a little smiley face curved line like so, and like so. And that's the clitellum, and it bulges out a little bit, so I'm just right now with my pencil gonna kinda bulge it out so I don't forget. Okay. Now, worms have segments. They have a lot of segments. The segments look like rings. Now, they have a lot of rings. I've been studying them a bunch lately. I'm not gonna draw all the rings because you don't really have to. I am just gonna put this is probably pretty wide spacing. Now you notice that I have a smiley face line there, right? So I'm gonna have smiley faces go up from it. And these are called contour lines. And the reason you use these is because it helps you see that the, the worm is like round. It's just not flat like a popsicle stick. It's round. And these kind of help you see that roundness. I'm trying to space them fairly evenly, but you know, Let's not get too particular, okay? And as you see, I always kind of sketch with this kind of, kind of slowly. And these guys go all the way down. And I don't think I'll do them all because I'm gonna keep on moving. Okay, so this type of worm, which is called a night crawler, they live in these burrows that they make. And the burrows are vertical, that means they go straight up and down. In these burrows, they can go down like three feet into the ground. I didn't know that. One thing I just found out about, I found out so much about worms this week because I've been reading about them, 
is I've always noticed that they have this kind of shape. The only worm I know that has this shape at the very end of their body that's kind of like, well, it's almost like kind of a shovel. It just gets wide all of a sudden. And the reason they have that is because if you've ever seen a robin or some bird, robins love worms, they pull these guys out of the ground. And the worms could expand this thing to hold onto the tunnel so that they don't get pulled out. And it's kind of quite a tug of war. I think that the robin usually wins. Now, another thing I learned is that these guys, they, when it rains, they like to come out when it rains because it means it's real wet outside and worms like to come out of their holes when it's really wet. And the, re the way they can tell it's raining since they don't have you know, a weather person or anything is they can hear the rain pattering on the ground and that makes them go, oh, it's raining, I'm gonna go out. Well, what the birds do is they do this little tap dance on top of the ground and it makes the worm think it's raining and they come out and then this big old bird with this big old beak grabs them by the head and yanks and they take their little tail and they try to hold on and there's probably a lot of screaming going on but it's silent screaming because they don't scream but they're probably screaming on the inside I would think and then usually the robin gets the worm particularly if it's an early bird because early birds get the worm and so anyway these guys, one of their favorite foods is leaves. And they grab them with their mouth, and I am gonna just make a really simple leaf. This is gonna be like about the simplest leaf in the whole world, okay? And it's, this worm has got it by its mouth. And we'll put a little bit of details on it so people will tell it's a leaf. So it's got its main stem, and it has all these little veins here. And then it has all the alternate veins. Now, one thing you might see that I'm doing that is really important to me is when I draw, I turn my paper to whatever position is the most comfortable. So there's times I have it upside down. I don't keep it all the same way all the time. So this worm is grabbing a leaf. Now these leaves are deep decomposing. So another technique that you do when you're drawing, if you're drawing something like a leaf, but you want it to be a, a rotting leaf, is you draw the whole thing, but then you take part of it away. Because hey, something came along and bit it. So even though I did those little pencil lines, I'm gonna erase them and make like a little crookedy line here. And maybe I'm gonna erase some of them little lines I put right there and make a little hole in it. And that is a much easier way to draw something that's missing its parts is to draw them at first. So that is the first type of worm. It is called a night crawler or a dew worm. Now there's another type of worm, and this one was a whole lot harder to learn about because it was kind of hard to figure out what it was called. Um, the closest I got was root dwelling worm, which means it, it kind of lives at the root level of plants. It doesn't, they say that they don't like to come out of the ground at all. They basically eat dirt, you know, that already has decomposed or rotted, decayed stuff in it. Um, but I know that they come out of the ground sometimes because I looked at a lot of diagrams and I saw that there were little tunnels off of their burrows that did go up, but they spend most of their time um, underground. These guys, they come up a lot. They come up to feed and they also come up to mate because when two worms mate, they wrap around each other and roll around and twist around and kind of hard to do that in a really skinny, skinny tunnel. So I bet these guys do that too. Now, if you want to see if you have these worms, go out in the spring, look in your lawn. And if you see that your lawn is kind of bumpy and you see a little hole like that, and it's got these little, these little kind of a pile of these little circular things, it looks kind of like just mud around the entrance to the tunnel, that is called worm cast. Now, worm cast is just a name for worm poop. That is worm poop. Now you might be going, why the heck is this guy teaching us about worm poop? That's gross. Well, it's not really. It's just kind of like little balls of dirt. And it happens to be some of the very best fertilizer and food for plants in the entire world and people just love to use that stuff. And you could make money raising worms just to get their poop, just to sell to gardeners. Okay, that's the night crawler. And this little guy here, they're basically the same shape. 
They're just not nearly as long. And these are the other ones that you'll find. If you dig a hole even a few inches deep, you'll probably find these guys. And again, they've got the clotellum like the other worms. And so I'll put one there and I'll put one here. Now, worms can, they have a head and they have a tail, but they can move through the ground backwards or forwards. So when I draw them like this, you really can't tell if the worm is crawling that way or if it's backing up the other way. Okay, now for the final type of worm. And this is a type is really important to me because these are the ones that I showed you and they're called red wigglers and they're composting worms. They wiggle a whole lot more. You often see them and they're in shapes like this. So I'm kind of making an S and it's the exact same shape. It's just way smaller than a, a night crawler. It's maybe about as long as the root dwelling worm, but it's a lot skinnier. Oh my goodness. This looks like a, a robin got to it. Sorry about that. Ah, I should have turned my paper. That's exactly seriously what I should have done. So I was in a better position. So I started out with an S. It looks kind of like a U. Now the thing about these guys is they don't make tunnels at all because they live in the very top layer. So we're going to put a, like a really light line, like right like this. This is called the litter layer. It's called the litter layer. And it doesn't mean it's a bunch of candy bar wrappers and stuff like that. What it means is a bunch of dead leaves and dead grass and just pieces of things. So I'm going to kind of like draw some like shapes here. So it's not deep soil, it's, it's loose. So they can move around and wiggle around in it and they just do not need to make a tunnel at all. It's got a lot of air in it. And it's just, uh, when you may have seen when people make gardens, they put a mulch layer on top of the soil. And the mulch layer is super important because it helps the plants not dry out. It protects the soil from the hot sun and from the wind. And it also gives these type of little critters a place to live. These type of critters do not live in the soil. Some people think they go in the soil, but they don't. They just stay on the top. Now, without going into a great deal of detail about how they reproduce, how they have babies, I am going to tell you something interesting that I find interesting is they get together and they match up their, their different parts of their body and they, they mix the eggs and the sperm in here. And they both, so they both have eggs and sperm and then they go off and they've ended up with this kind of like, this kind of like a, it's like almost like an armband that's kind of this slimy gooey armband that's around them. And then they go off and after it dries out a bit, they actually, it's like if you were pulling off a shower cap, you know, they pull it off, pull it off the end of their body and it ends up, the ends of it close up and it ends up the shape of a lemon. So that is called a cocoon. So when you have worms and you look through them, you'll find all these little tiny lemon shaped things and they are cocoons. And each one of them has about, oh, two to five tiny baby worms in them. And after a few weeks, these teensy little worms come out and they are so tiny, you wouldn't believe it. And they're also completely clear. And it's really fun. If you ever get worms, kids in particular are very, very good at finding these things. They're pretty small. And you could take them and you could put them in a folded paper towel with a little bit of moisture and leave it there for two days and they'll hatch. And you have these super skinny little worms just wiggling around. And then you put them, of course, you put them right back in the worm bin so they don't, they don't get hurt. But I would recommend that. Find some cocoons. Keep them moist for a couple of days. Keep checking on them. And you'll get to see the baby worms. Okay. Okay, guys. Nice work on part two. Go ahead and cook on part three to keep drawing.